Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Planet X and the Interstellar Medium. Can we leave the solar system? Now, the interstellar medium is the space outside the solar system. The solar system is made up of the sun's heliosphere, a close to spherical bubble created by the sun's solar wind and magnetic field. It is the sun's equivalent to the Earth's magnetosphere, and it is thus expected to deflect the interstellar wind away from the sun. Hence, the heliosphere acts as a protective shield which keeps most cosmic rays, in other words, most ionized or charged particles, from entering into the solar system. The heliosphere was initially believed to be egg-shaped and to have a long tail behind it, as we can see from this image. But new data indicates that it is spherical and has no tail. So this is uh, what the solar system uh, actually seems to look like from this new data. And this comes from the Cassini and the Voyager uh, spacecraft uh, data. They've revealed that it's actually spherical. There's no tail in the heliosphere. Now, the Ulysses spacecraft, uh, it was launched in 1990 into a solar polar orbit, and you can actually see the orbit here. It was launched from Earth, it went out around Jupiter, and then it went into a polar orbit around the Sun. This is where it was in 1995, when it did its first um, north polar pass, so above the Sun's north pole. Now, um, the spacecraft did not orbit close to the Sun. As you can see, its perihelion position was 1.35 AU, so there, a, a little further than Earth's orbit, and the aphelion position was 5.4 AU, so a little further than Jupiter, because uh, Jupiter's average orbital distance is 5.2 AU. In fact, the spacecraft flew close to Jupiter in 1992. There it is. Now, Ulysses was also used to study the interstellar medium uh, by detecting interstellar dust and neutral helium that had come into the solar system from outside. So initially, it was designed to study the sun at all latitudes, so above and below the sun's poles. But it was also used to study the interstellar medium. And the data uh, showed that there was um, 30 times more interstellar dust coming into the solar system than expected. And I'll talk about that a little more later. But by 2005, Ulysses data had indicated that the solar system was moving through a warm, tenuous cloud of interstellar dust and gas. This cloud was believed to be one of several that make up the local galactic environment through which the Sun is moving. The temperature of this cloud was determined to be 6,300 Kelvin. This is not, however, a temperature that would be measured with a thermometer. This temperature is determined by averaging the speed of particles in the cloud of gas, and is thus a measure of the heat energy contained in the particles. The local interstellar medium had been studied between 1987 and 2011 through optical and UV line absorption in the light of nearby stars, and thus as far out as 78 light years. Uh, these studies showed that the interstellar medium was made up of roughly equal amounts of neutral and ionized gas, which indicated that it was warm, of low density, and partially ionized. In other words, the Ulysses data seemed to agree with these studies, which indicated that the interstellar medium was warm and not hot. Now, the IBX, which stands for Interstellar Boundary Explorer um, spacecraft, was launched in 2008 into an Earth orbit and was designed to study uh, the inter interaction between the solar wind and the interstellar wind, and therefore the boundary between the solar system and interstellar space. 
And the data showed by 2015 that the interstellar solar wind was much hotter than what the Ulysses data had indicated. The IBEX data suggested a temperature of 7,500 Kelvin, which would make the local interstellar cloud hot rather than warm, as the Ulysses data had suggested. This means that the interstellar medium either became hotter between 2005, when the Ulysses data was analyzed, and the temperature calculated, and 2015, when the IBEX data was analyzed, or it may have been much hotter than predicted in the first place. I think that since the UV measurements agreed with the Ulysses data, indicating that it was just warm up to 2011, that the temperature of the interstellar medium at the boundary between it and the solar system has recently increased from warm to hot. So where would this heat come from? Well, we know that there are a huge number of Planet X system objects in the solar system, as large numbers have been found in the Sun's corona. And you may look at Article 321 entitled Huge Planet X Star in the Inner Solar System, and Article 333 entitled Huge Numbers of Planet X System Objects in Chronograph Images. And this is one of these objects, one of these objects which are called stellar cores. They are dead or energy depleted stars. They have invaded our solar system, they are attracted to the sun, and they are only found in the sun's corona. This one is obviously much larger than the sun. As you can see, the size of the sun is indicated by the white circle on the occulter. This is a Lasco C2 image from 2014 and this was sent to me by R. Wayne Steiger. As you can see, the object has to be very close to the sun because we can see the sun reacting to its presence and part of this uh, plasma that is issuing from the sun as a result of its reaction is actually on top of or in front of this object, indicating the object is extremely close to the sun. And it turned out to be actually seven times larger than the sun. Now, these objects are basically dead stars and thus energy depleted. They therefore absorb energy from solar system objects, which results in heating and ionization in the contact region in what I have named the Planet X effect, as I have detailed in Article 338 entitled The Planet X Effect, Heating and Ionization in Contact Regions. The Planet X effect arises as a result of particles emitting photon energy whenever they come into contact with matter which is lower in energy. This means that heating would be expected to occur anywhere where the Planet X system of stellar cores makes contact with the solar system. And since the Planet X objects must come from outside the solar system, the boundary between the solar system and the interstellar space occupied by the Planet X system is the likely region where this heating and ionization would take place. In addition, the recent increase in the temperature at the outer edge of the solar system indicates that larger numbers of objects and their debris have approached the outer edge of the solar system in the last few years. And this is a SOHO Lasco C1 image. This one is from June 25, 1986. A very old image, and it shows a large um, jet plasma ejection there. It also shows um, thousands of dark centers surrounded by disc shaped rings. And this is what light uh, point light sources look like in chronograph images, which are defocused and because of the diffraction effects arising from uh, the eyepiece of the telescope. So the diffraction effects causes um, light sources to look like dark centers with light rings around them. And this is what we see here, lots and lots and lots of them. And these were uh, small stellar cores, possibly the dead planets of uh, the dead stars that are 
the larger stellar cores in the system that had by then uh, reached the sun's corona. Now, data provided by several spacecraft reveals that the solar system is within a cloud of dust and gas called the local interstellar cloud. And since the solar system seems to be close to one edge of this cloud, it seems to have recently entered it. Obviously, the planet X system would have to be inside this cloud as well. As this cloud seems to be quite uniform, it is therefore possible that the planet X system occupies the whole cloud, and that therefore the cloud is the planet X system. But uh, that until recently we had only moved through the outer edges of it, where there were not as many objects of debris as in the part that we encountered after 2011, since that was the time when the last of the UV data indicating a warm interstellar environment was published. So it seems that between 2011 and 2015, we encountered a more densely populated part of the planet X system, which must have caused many more larger objects and debris to enter the solar system and arrive at the sun's corona. And it also caused more stellar core matter to interact with the solar system at the boundary of the solar system, which then caused the boundary to heat up. This heat comes from the sun. It is transmitted through the solar system out to the edge. The heat does not come from the planet X objects because they do not have energy to share. They are absorbers of energy. However, this also suggests that the planet X objects will not just come straight through the solar system boundary, but will remain outside at the boundary for some time, absorbing as much energy as they can from the boundary, and only after some time will they penetrate and start making their way towards the sun. It is also possible that the comets are part of the system, since comets have to also come from outside the solar system. Now, the local interstellar cloud is 30 light years across and thus nearly 20,000 times larger than the solar system. This would then suggest that the stellar cores that are now found in the sun's corona are only a small percentage of the total number of objects in the planet X system, and that these objects will continue to come in as time passes. In addition, this would mean that the solar system is surrounded on all sides by the planet X system, which would make leaving the solar system an extremely hazardous, hazardous affair. In addition, these objects Extreme low gravity as a result of their low energy status makes it impossible to navigate the system with electrogravitic or anti-gravity drives. The dust and debris surrounding the objects will also make journeying out beyond the edge of the solar system hazardous even with conventional fuel drives, which would make the journey extremely long as well. In addition, there are no living systems inside the planet X system. They are all dead. Any living systems would have had uh, its energy depleted by the rest of the system a long time ago. And you may look at Article 244 entitled The Planet X System, Destroyer of Star Systems, for more details. And uh, here you see one of these objects, um, one of the stellar cores in the sun's corona. As you can see, the object is striped, and this is because it's an old star or a brown dwarf. And it's, uh, there's a tail of material behind it. That's because these objects absorb material from the sun's corona. They often acquire new atmosphere, which comes from the sun, and then they start emitting light from that newly acquired atmosphere. Now, the Voyager spacecraft were launched in 1977 and were designed to explore the outer reaches of the solar system and beyond. The Voyager spacecraft had by 2009 reached the outer bounds of the heliosphere, and analysis of its data in 2009 indicated that the interstellar space just outside the solar system had an unexpectedly strong magnetic field, which was tilted by 20 to 30 degrees from the interstellar medium flow direction.
The magnetic field was twice as strong as expected. This correlates with the fact that the planet X objects of stellar cores have high magnetic fields. These objects are all over the galaxy and are known as brown dwarfs. However, brown dwarfs are actually old or dying stars, not substellar objects. And you may look at Article 317 entitled Planet X System, Brown and Black Dwarfs with High Magnetic Field for more details. The objects lose their gravitational fields and electric fields as they age, but retain most of the magnetic field strength they have had as living stars. This would therefore suggest that the unexpectedly high magnetic field in a local interstellar cloud is as a result of the planet X system objects, which are mostly not visible due to their inability to emit light, as a result of their very low electric fields in their outer layers. And you may look at Article 184 entitled Stellar Core Evolution. In addition, the Ulysses spacecraft also detected interstellar dust for the first time in 1993. Interstellar dust had been predicted to be coming into the solar system in 1976, but the Ulysses data showed that there was 30 times more dust than expected. Since there is now a huge amount of stellar core debris in the solar system, and it was most likely the entrance of stellar core dust, which led to the appearance of noctilucent crowds in 1850, it should not be surprising that this dust was found in the solar system in 1993, or that it was in fact much more abundant than predicted. And you may look at Article 146 entitled Planet X System, Time of Arrival, and Article 270 entitled Noctilucent Clouds and Planet X Debris in the Earth's Atmosphere. It is of course likely that the amount of stellar core dust coming from the Planet X system will continue to increase. Then the fact that this dust comes from different directions also indicates that the Planet X system surrounds the solar system on all sides. In conclusion, Data from various spacecraft, namely Ulysses, Voyager, and Ibex, suggest that the Planet X system has surrounded the solar system and that the system is much larger than the solar system. This has resulted in the region of contact, the boundary of the solar system with space outside it, reaching higher temperatures than expected, and has resulted in a huge amount of interstellar dust, which is really stellar core dust filling our solar system. We seem to have entered a more densely part of the system between 2011 and 2015. In addition, the Planet X system may be as large as the whole interstellar cloud that the whole solar system finds itself inside of. The cloud is 20,000 times larger than the solar system, and since these objects and their debris would make navigating through the system extremely hazardous, if not impossible, this means that leaving the solar system is most likely impossible. And here are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.